Hey y'all, it's Megan with uh, Digital Downtown Do The Brew and I am here with uh, uh, Tracy and Eric. They are with Sarah Cider in Lincoln. Tracy is a co-owner and Eric is the president of operations. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so um, can you just dive right in and tell us each one of you a little bit about what you do there at Cero? Wanna go ahead, Eric? Sure, I am in charge of day-to-day -day operations in the production facility. Uh, I do a lot of the heavy lifting in the sense that I monitor the fermentations. I start and uh, finish most of the fermentations. I also do some of the blending and uh, manage a lot of the packaging as well. But I get help from of all of pretty much everybody on our team has helped in the in the production area at some point. And I uh, work more on the business operations side of things. So everything from bookkeeping, accounting work, regulatory reporting, HR, um, and then some of the operations piece of it as well. Awesome. So all of that uh, behind the scenes stuff that people don't necessarily realize go into when owning and operating a brewery or a winery or a cidery. Um, and then Eric, you know, you talked a little bit about how the team comes together and helps. So how many folks do you have on your team there normally? And can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like? So I work directly with one other person. Uh, and but then I, I end up using help from just about everybody that works here that is available has been willing enough as as many of you know there's anytime you have a small operation it really takes everybody's input at some point so I was able to get some people's help this last week when we had um, you know a, a need for a large amount of people and then I also uh, I'm able to use the various owners who aren't here on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, whenever they have time, they're willing to come in and, and do what's need, needed to be done. And that's uh, on our team that in the tasting room, there's maybe six people. There's a salesperson. There's the, and then there's me and the assistant back here but uh, only myself and the tasting room manager and one other person in the tasting room really work full time and then everybody else sort of uh, fills in as needed and then also helps out in the back to A, to get some extra hours, but also just whenever it, it's needed. That's great, that's great. I think we're all very familiar with that same situation. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Tracy, can you tell us a little bit about the name Cero Cider? Sure. Um, it it really came from originally. This is a little un, little known fact, I guess, about Cero Cider. Originally, we tried to build this company and name it as Sidecar Cider, but we couldn't trademark it. But we had done a lot of the branding, and we really liked the brand image um, and the, the logo that had been developed. And so, we were looking for a name that worked with that. So, Cero is it comes from actually um, a Samson Roth airplane made years ago um, in the early 1900s that took to not only air and land, but also water. It was very versatile and it was a passenger plane. And so we've still felt that that uh, fit in with our brand image, which is really about exploring the journey, sharing the journey and trying new things. Um, and that's what we feel like hard cider is. You're, we've got a variety of flavors and we encourage our customers to try try these new flavors and actually all our ciders are named after various destinations so um, that that's where the name came from that's awesome can you tell us a little bit about how you all got into cidery uh, or brewing cider rather than beer what's the story behind that because I know at a beer fest we're used to you know ales and lagers and whatnot but um, we were so happy to have you all join us and now we're joining in this way. So can you tell us a little bit about the story behind going into brewing cider? Sure. Um, so two of the brewers, uh, my husband, Matt Wood and Jonathan Henning, um, they kind of come at it from different angles. My husband is a celiac and he was diagnosed with celiac around the time his brother-in-law started a brewery. 
And so he started home brewing hard cider as a substitute for beer. And Jonathan has uh, an orchard and he was growing apples and fermenting them and making hard cider with them. And so the two of them know each other from their day jobs and got to talking and thought, well, they'd like to go learn more about cider making. And then when they were there, they're like, hey, we think we can make this a business. And so that's kind of how this all started. And where is there? Where is where the class they went where, to? Yeah, where did they go for this? They went to a, a class at Cornell University. Um, a, yeah, a pretty high, high profile, high tech class on this. They were there with people from um, Angry Orchard and help me, Eric, on this one because I can't remember all the places. Um, Miller had somebody from there. Miller had somebody. And there was a little bit of a competition and they did pretty well in this competition. And so they, they came home and had to talk to their wives about opening up this cidery. Uh, and Jonathan's wife, Paige, and I had been in business school together, and we took a look at it and said, hey, okay, let's give it a try. Cool, cool. That's great. And it's fun when, you know, uh, friends come together. Sometimes that can be difficult in business, but as long as, you know, the wheels are, are oiled well and things continue to run as smoothly as possible, it's, it's a fun relationship to have, I think. And then a lot of times, you know, there are spouses who come in, and then there are the really important people who come in who also have nothing to do with the family or friendship <laughs> and, you know, end up um, running brewing operations and fermentation operations. Right, Eric? <laughs> well, and, yeah. you know, and I think it balances well. We all kind of bring something to the table. And I will say, I think Eric brings, you know, he's a certified chef and he brings that ability for the blending and coming up with the flavors that have sold so well for us. So yeah, it's great. And it's true though that, you know, Paige, she does a lot of the social media and marketing component of it. So everybody's doing something in the group. The the levels certainly, the volume gets turned up and down at different times for different people. Uh, but, and that has to do as much with their, their day jobs and or their what's going on in their life as much as the needs of of here yeah definitely definitely um it's it's really great to have that flexibility i think especially around small businesses when people when you do amp up and ramp up like you were saying eric those roles and responsibilities and then i'm sure tracy you're in there you know beginning of the month and doing payroll and all of that Crazy you know sitting, all the time <laughs> Okay. All right. Good. Tracy and I see each other the most, and we we actually have to interact the most out of uh -huh. everybody to make sure that that, and we don't see each other every day, but she comes down quite a bit just to make a to check in, see if if she needs because she's always willing to help out with whatever, but also to really go over the numbers and make sure that that we have stuff, go over inventory of of things, and. You know that is she's sort of a she sort of is a crutch to me and what it is that that I am doing so that a, a lot of that that sort of input into the you know the the computer system is is sort of on her shoulders and that's really helpful for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's amazing. That's it's cool to see those relationships that I think people aren't necessarily aware of um, on this side of the of the beer world or the cider world. So can you guys tell us about some exciting new, Eric, can you tell us about some exciting new things that might be on a two brew list or what you've got going on, what's fermenting right now? Yeah, we do. So the way that we get product, you can see the size of the tanks behind us. So we, we do ferment in some pretty large volumes and the way that we do it, most of what we get, we get a lot of juice at one time and we store it in tanks and then we ferment it as quickly as, as possible into the different base ciders that we use. Um, unlike beer, cider only is getting better with age. So some of, a lot of our product, we can, we, we don't want to serve it right away. We want it to age out uh, at least a couple of weeks before we blend it into uh, some of our finished products. And um, so, Things that are on the horizon are uh, we're we're going to, we just packaged last week for the first time a third item a just a kind of a sweet basic apple variety called Milestone. Then 
later in the summer where our plans are to do a raspberry seasonal and then a three sisters, which is going to be a juniper and elderflower. And those are ones that we had available last summer in keg only and sold really well. So we decided to, to get the graphic work done and that fits along with the rest of our stuff as well as the one seasonal and uh, that way we should be able to keep new product out there in the markets. Uh, you know, right now we have 10 ciders on tap here, but we have two package products outside of we partnered with somebody uh, with Whiskey Run Creek to do a Pamo, so which is a French style dessert wine uh, that's barrel aged. And then we also did a um, a sizer. Jonathan did a sizer where we barrel fermented it. It was uh, 50 gallons of juice from Nebraska with 10 gallons of honey. Uh, barrel fermented it, then barrel aged it. That's available in bottles right now as well. We just put some of our Zamora, which is one of our package products, and it's a jalapeno cider that's it's sweet. It's not like blow your mind spicy, but it, it has a nice sort of fresh jalapeno flavor to it. And we put that into two tequila barrels last week. So we're going to see how that ages out. We've got a, a Pear Seco, which is a high ABV, uh, high carbonation, barrel aged pear and apple cider. Um, I was going to blend up. A, I did a trial on like a sangria style one for the summer for the tasting room. And I don't know. We'll figure, I, I know myself, we'll, we'll have a couple of wild cards in there for the summer as well. That's great. That's great. So um, last question, what is your go-to cider? Each one of you, what's your favorite that you have available that you would sip on 100% of the time if you could? Okay, I'll go first. When we first started out, it was the Zamora because it was a surprise and it was just a nice blend of spicy and sweet. Um, but now it's Three Sisters. It's a botanical based flavored cider, I should say. And um, it's it, it's fragrant on the nose. It's not cloyingly sweet. Like you can have multiple of it. It's just, it's fabulous. It's refreshing and fabulous. I'm excited that we're going to put it in bottles. And so are people I know. They're like, I can get this out in the market. I don't have to come into the, the cidery to get it. And so they're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, good, good. And Eric, how about you? My favorite had been a hopped one that we did with some Nebraska whole cone hops and some Arbor Day farm juice. That's gone as of this weekend. I know I just saw the last keg sitting outside of the cooler that must have kicked on Saturday. And then the, uh, but my go-to has always been one of Jonathan's, which is the Valencia. And it's done as like, it, it has sort of a, a tea-like fermentation style to it where we put dried orange and dried hop into it. And it's a dry cider. It has a little bit of the citrusy and hoppy notes to it. And it's the one that I can session anytime, summer or winter. Never get tired of that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. That's awesome. And it's so beautiful to see because I know a lot of our viewers may not be as familiar with ciders. Um, so it's really beautiful to see the correlation between the beer industry and the cider industry and the passion and, you know, how you talk about the flavor profiles are very similar to how folks talk about the flavor profiles of beer. And um, so crossing that bridge is always great. And it's amazing to have a gluten-free option. <laughs> amazing. So thank you all for doing what you do and sticking in there. Thanks for joining us today and stay nice and safe. Thank you. All right. Can't Thank wait you. to come see you guys. Yeah, likewise. <laughs>